Now, I'm very, very proud to celebrate our next Global Citizen Youth Leaders Award recipient. She is a feminist and a body positivity advocate from Sri Lanka. She understands firsthand the damage caused by society's beauty standards, both spoken and unspoken, especially colorism. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is a social phenomenon where people in an ethnic group with darker skin are more likely to experience discrimination than those with lighter skin. Now, she's spoken widely about colorism in South Asia and among Asian Australians. She's worked with CNN on issues of colorism and anti-racism as part of their As Equal series. She's modeled for a major Sri Lankan brand, highlighting the need to represent people of all skin tones. And she spends her spare time smashing the patriarchy. Not a bad way to spend your time if you ask me. Please meet Devni Wimalasena. If you are dark skinned, you are ugly. Hearing this and seeing it reflected everywhere around me is unfortunately one of my earliest memories. As a dark skinned South Asian, the soundtrack of do not go out in the sun, you will get even darker, followed me everywhere I went. As a child, I felt like there was nothing I could do. There was nothing I could do to change this fate. This fate of simply being three shades darker than the ideal. And everywhere I looked, I was reminded of this. Whether it was my friends, my family, even my teachers telling us and reminding us to not go out in the sun. It was South Asian media only showing us light-skinned actors. It was this never-ending barrage of commercials for the multi-billion dollar skin bleaching industry that lined the shelves of su supermarkets across Asia and Africa. To me, it was this never-ending reminder that being dark will simply never be good enough. This was really a system, a system of racism, colorism, and anti-blackness, a system that had been upheld for generations by colonialism. But as a teenager, I tried to cope by embracing this. My nickname at school was black, and no one not even me questioned why the entirety of my identity felt like it somehow hinged upon my skin color. I now, I now embrace this differently. I now know that this was never my own struggle. But when those beliefs are being driven by everyone around you, by the people who love you, it's so confusing. It's so confusing, especially for young people of color. And this is why it is so important to talk about it. So important to talk about colorism, to bring this darkness into the light. Just by talking, we're already chipping away at these structures. We're dismantling these structures but it truly starts with us. Every single day is an opportunity to break this silence. So what did I do? I decided to become this representation, the representation that I so desperately needed when I was a girl. I started modeling. I started speaking on podcasts, on CNN, on talk shows. And the feedback, the feedback has been incredible. It's been overwhelming. So many people, just like me, telling me that they too have experienced colorism. They too never had a way to talk about it before. 
Some even said they didn't even know there was a word for this before. I'm now so proud to say that I have, in a way, given them what I so desperately needed. Just someone to say, no, she is beautiful. And she is enough, just as she is. Thank you. It's why I now love sitting out in the sun. It feels like this radical, this revolutionary act every time I go to the beach, because I get to bring my beautiful darkness into the light. <laughs>